Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Ahmed Salim recording for the Daily Reminder. When Rasulullah sallam, he enters his house one day on a day of Eid, he finds that Aisha radiallahu anha, she is singing with her friends using some duff. And as Rasulullah sallam, he enters the house, he probably says salam to them or he looks at them, affirms whatever they were doing and goes and sleeps in his room. Now keep this in mind that Rasulullah he had a very small house. He was just like a one room house. So he sleeps, he goes to his bed, he takes the cloak that he would have and he covers himself up and looks towards the wall as if looking away from Aisha radiallahu anha and her two friends. The singing carries on, they're, they're, they're singing and it's the day of Eid and Abu Bakr radiallahu anha, at that point he hears the sounds of, you know, this, this duff, this, this, this music that's playing and, you know, he couldn't take it. So he comes into the house and he's like, what is this? The sounds of shaitan in the house of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At this point, Rasulullah he gets up from his bed, he turns, takes, takes off the cloak and he tells Abu Bakr, Da'ahum Aba Bakr, leave them Abu Bakr. فَإِنَّ هَذَا يَوْمُ الفرح. Leave them Abu Bakr for verily this is the day of joy and this is the day of Eid. At that point Abu Bakr and Rasulullah they carried on talking. Aisha radiallahu anha carried on singing songs and enjoying her time with, with her young friends. And then moments later she, she stops and she kind of like gives them a rams. She gives them a, a signal saying go ahead you guys can leave now. Now the story ends over there. Let us draw some lessons from this story. First lesson that we find that Rasulullah sallam he had ru'ab. This ru'ab basically means this feeling of awe that the other person would feel when they would look at Rasulullah sallam or when Rasulullah would be close proximity to an individual. He had a ru'ab of 30 days, meaning if he was taking an army towards an enemy, the enemy would be able to feel this awe that was emanating from Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now ask yourself this question: Where did that awe disappear when he entered the house? That's why we find Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, you know, كَانَ ضَحَّاكًا بَسَّامًا That Rasulullah in the house, he was always, he was like abundantly smiling and a happy person. And he was not one, you know, he was not like a husband that enters a house or a father that enters a house and the children, they run away into their homes like a cat running away from, uh, like, a, like the mice running away from the cat. The second thing I want you to look at or analyze over here is that Rasulullah understands the meaning of privacy. This thing, you know, leave me, give me my private space, I want my privacy. Rasulullah understood this 1400 years ago. When he realized that his wife is busy with her friends and they don't have a big house, they have one room, he gave them total privacy by, by literally taking a cloak, covering himself up and facing on the other way, away from the, the young girls so that they can take their free space and they can feel free in doing whatever they're doing. So he gave them that privacy and I think we should all realize that you know husbands and wives, children, as the, our children grow up, everybody needs that privacy and Rasulullah understood this and he gave it to his wife and he gave it to the people around him also. The third lesson that we get in this story is you find Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, he enters and he realizes that something is wrong, right? It's like this duff being played in the house of Nabi Wasallam. all of this was too much for Abu Bakr to take. So he enters the house thinking he's going to do, he's rectifying the situation. And at that point, Rasulullah he stops Abu Bakr from interfering in his housely affairs, in his marital affairs. Although he's Abu Bakr, his ra'i is going, to, his opinion is going to be one of the most uh, uh, honest opinion, one of the most, you know, uh, uh, closest opinion to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have revealed. Despite that, Rasulullah did not give him that freedom to interfere with his household. He said, he told him, Da'ahum ya Abu Bakr, leave them, i.e. do not interfere in my house. Then he gave the reason of why Rasulullah has permitted this, because he realized the awatif, he realized the feelings that a, a, the human beings have to express. And he said, Inna hadha yawmul farah, this is a day of happiness. And Islam has absolutely no uh, Islam is not against us expressing our happiness, our feelings in whatever cultural ways that you know each society has as long as we do not cross the boundaries of Sharia. The next lesson that we get in this particular story is look at the smartness of Aisha radiallahu anha. She is obliged 
to, she's mandated after her marriage to listen to Rasulullah But she also has her father who has taken care of Aisha radiallahu all her life. And you know, when the command comes from a father or the husband, obviously the husband takes precedence after the marriage. So the wife is obliged to listen to the husband over the father. But look at the smartness of Aisha radiallahu that she actually listened to Abu ba uh, to Rasulullah and she carried on singing while Abu Bakr and Rasulullah they carried on talking. But then moments later she stopped. Why did she stop? Just to kind of like also make her father at ease because she realized that this thing was not something her, her father was happy with. And oftentimes it's that, that dilemma that all, all of us are stuck in, which is how do we make our husbands happy and our parents happy at the same time? You just gotta be smart. And you know, you, you just gotta play it smart and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us tawfiq. This is Ahmed Salim signing off for Daily Reminder.